Hey everybody, it's Michael here with GoodyReader.com. Today I'm going to teach you how to load your own ebooks on the Amazon Kindle Fire HD 8.9. Uh, the primary format that you're going to look for when you download books that aren't purchased directly from Amazon are Mobi, PRC, or AZW. These are the formats that companies like Smashwords and a number of other publishing companies actually sell the Amazon Kindle friendly format online. Uh, when you are also downloading books from, say, Project Gutenberg or a number of other free ebook sources, often they do have Kindle friendly formats. So, this being an Android tablet, you have two options. One that you could follow this tutorial, and another is another video tutorial we're uh, going to film soon that will teach you how to load Android apps on a Kindle Fire HD that are not exclusively dealing with Amazon, so Google, or you can install Eldico, Kobo, and a number of other e-reading companies and deal directly with them if you want to. Caliber, Windows Explorer, Dropbox, and a number of other methods is what I'm going to teach you today. First thing we're going to look at is Caliber. This is a free program, and once you download and install it, and hook up your Kindle to your PC via the micro USB to USB cable. You'll get, do you want Caliber to manage your Kindle? You'll select yes, and then you'll look at here, and you'll see all the books that you have purchased, as well as other files like this. You shouldn't really worry about this. Caliber does basically scan everything that's on your Kindle, so you may get sometimes things like this. But just don't pay it any heed. Caliber is a really good program to manage your ebook information. So to add a book, you need to scan your computer to where you store books. I have a few here. So I'm going to select that. You can see here's the cover art. This is a sample of The Forgotten by David Batticelli. If you want to edit this book for any reason, you can right click, click Edit Metadata individually. And you can see all the details here. In a lot of cases, you may have downloaded books from Project Gutenberg or other websites where maybe the book uploader's name is in a title, or maybe in the title is the title of the book, the series, and the book, uh, book author's name. So it can get quite messy pretty quick. A lot of people want to be able to manage their Kindles a little bit more effectively. So I always want the author's last name first with a comma. And then like this. So basically, anything searches for B, you'll get that for his last name. And this is things that Caliber does totally well. You can press OK and save all that. But you could also swipe in your own cover art or a different cover art. There's a lot of features. But this is Mobi format. And what we want to do is we want to send this device, send this file to the main memory. And you can see in the bottom left-hand corner, it saved it. I'm just going to go to my Kindle. And here's the book here. So it's now copied to my device. The next time I unplug my Kindle from my PC and uh, go to your library shelf under books, you'll see this book pop up with a little new tag there. So it's uh, the sample book, and that's how you do it. Uh, in other cases, one Thing Caliber is good for is when you download books that don't have digital rights management. You could also, sorry, I could. You could also do some amazing things. You can actually com convert one ebook format to another. So I have a sample of the same book here, but it's actually an EPUB format, and you can see it here. Now, by default, the Kindle Fire doesn't read EPUB. So what we want to do is convert this to a Kindle-friendly format. So right-click, convert books individually. The output format, I want to change it from EPUB to Mobi. Now, this is probably the most popular format for Kindle books. So I'm going to click OK. You can see it's taken a bit longer to convert than it was just to send the ebook to the device. Sometimes it'll take a few seconds. The larger the book is, a few minutes. You can click here and actually see some progress. Uh, 
Okay, so now the book has been saved to Mobi format, but it's still retaining the old EPUB format. So you have two versions of the book, the Kindle friendly and the EPUB friendly, which is good for everything else. An interesting note to point out is people might be familiar with Adobe Digital Editions. This is a very popular program that people use in order to purchase ebooks from one company and then load them on your device. Now, because Kindle uses its own proprietary ebook format, it's actually incompatible with Adobe Digital Editions. So you can't buy EPUBs from Kobo or Barnes & Noble and then load them on your device. Instead, you have to use their official apps on the Kobo. Now, by default, those apps aren't available on the Amazon App Store, you have to instead use our own Goody Reader App Store. And all you have to do is like visit goodyreader.com slash apps on your Kindle web browser, and you can download our app store directly to your Kindle. And then once you do that, you'll have a ton of options available for you for say e-reading, and this is used for reading ebooks. So you could install Google Books, Barnes and Noble, Kobo, Aldeco, Adobe Reader, Sony Reader, Moon Plus Reader cool reader or a, a wide array you can see we have a lot of different ones here so your kindle suddenly could read other ebook formats one of the things that uh, people tend to use more these days on tablets is dropbox uh, dropbox is a cloud storage solution what you can do is you could upload ebooks to your Dropbox account and then access that via the internet browser on your Kindle. Once you do that, you don't always have to use your web browser to read the book, but you just have to basically access your link to download the ebook to your Kindle. And then once it's downloaded to your Kindle, it'll automatically appear on your main library shelf. So it's fairly solid. So I'm going to click upload. Well, first it's essential to point out that you need to open up a Dropbox account and it's free. They give you gigs of storage space completely for free, which is the equivalent of storing four or 5,000 eBooks. So it's a lot. You click upload. I'm going to choose a file. I'm going to choose another sample eBook I have here, Armageddon by James Patterson. Okay, now it's done. And here it is. All I have to do now is access my Dropbox account by logging into it with your login and password that you use to register the account on the Kindle Silk web browser. It'll download and show right up on your main library shelf. So this is very effective. One of the things that people tend to use is Windows Explorer. Now this is very popular in terms of Traditionally, this is how people copy ebooks, and you can see that it offers the least amount of flexibility. Uh, with Caliber, we can change the cover art if we wanted to. We can download metadata if we wanted to. We can change every aspect of the book. Uh, we can even change margins and the styling sheets right in here under Advanced Tools. With Windows Explorer, you're dragging and dropping, folks. It's it's pretty simple. So. You can see here there's a Jack London book. It's filtered under ebooks. And then if you click books here, you see all of the books that I have purchased, you know, from Amazon. And you see a total different directory structure here. Your Audible books. So basically, you don't want to touch a lot of this stuff. I recommend putting a the ebooks on your Kindle in your documents folder so you can see that this is where um, Eldico or sorry where um, Caliber ended up putting the books in this directory so all you have to do is find where the ebooks are on your computer copy a random open source ebook and I'm just gonna click paste now this too, when I unplug my Kindle from my PC, will show up on my main library shelf. So you've now learned how to copy eBooks to your tablet in a few different ways. You could either do it on your Caliber, Windows Explorer, or you could do it via Dropbox. And this is the cloud method. Obviously, this is probably one of the most popular methods because not only can you access that on your Kindle, but you could actually access them on your smartphone or any other type of mobile device that you may have. So hopefully you found this tutorial useful. If you have any questions, please comment on this YouTube video. For all the latest news, previews, and reviews of the Kindle Fire HD 8.9, point your 
web browser to goodyreader.com slash blog. And for Goody Reader, my name is Michael, and everybody take care.